Twin has produced reports for the Southern African Trade Hub and DFID Malawi outlining the interventions we believe will best reduce human exposure to aflatoxin and improve regional and international trade by improving quality management in local and export food systems. Working with key stakeholders in Malawi's groundnut sector, critical control points for aflatoxin management were identified with the specific challenges at each point examined in detail. In any crop that you are doing, it's instrumental uh, that you should have good quality seed. And currently in Malawi, the demand for good quality legume seed is very, very high. With demand for good quality groundnut seed outstripping supply, many smallholder farmers are currently using inferior seed. Poor quality seed produces a weaker plant that is more susceptible to contamination by Aspergillus flavus, the fungus that produces aflatoxin. Uh, we started some projects some time back where our smallholder farmers are accessing basic seed and using the government machinery to make sure that they're multiplying it and they get certified seed which then we can sell and other farmers can buy too. That is working well but it needs to be upscaled. Research institutes such as International Crops Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics or ICRISAT are working on developing varieties of groundnuts that are best suited to growing in the region's specific climatic conditions. This will result in groundnut plants growing under less stress and therefore being more resistant to fungal contamination. The challenge then is the successful wide-scale distribution of new varieties of seed to smallholder farmers. The time of planting is also an important issue. Uh, we ask farmers to plant early so that the crop can be harvested when the soil still has some moisture uh, because when you have the dry soil, the nuts crack and the fungus can get in and contaminate uh, the grain. Once seed has been planted, the conditions under which it is grown will also have a significant effect on the extent to which it is contaminated. And research has shown that the plant is usually more susceptible to infection um, about 30 days before harvest especially if it's um, exposed to drought stress. So when the, when the plant is stressed um, uh, by, by drought, um, the production of defensive chemicals in the plant go down, so it becomes more susceptible to, to infection. Farmers are being trained in practices such as mulching, which reduces the soil's temperature and improves its ability to retain water, and the application of lime, that hardens the shell in an attempt to reduce contamination in the pre-harvest period. The growth of Aspergillus flavus and the development of aflatoxin are influenced by moisture content. Once groundnut's moisture level is brought below 9%, the rate of aflatoxin production will be slowed. As below 7%, it will cease altogether. However, achieving these low moisture levels is a real challenge for smallholders. We have designed some drying structures that they can use right in the field so that you have gradual drying of the nuts uh, without exposure to moisture. Uh, because what farmers do is they just lift the nuts out of the ground and they leave them lying there for a month or two. Uh, the problem we have with that is then you have the dew forming at night uh, on the surface uh, of the nut and then the fungus starts to grow. As a result of its research, Twin is recommending a move to controlled drying and nut in shell buying. If farmers are able to sell their ground nuts in shell, then the need for the nut to spend months in poor conditions, either in the field or household, will be removed. Buyers such as the National Smallholder Farmers Association of Malawi and Afrinut, a peanut processor based in Lilongwe, 
can take responsibility for the drying process with optimum moisture levels achieved earlier. Further research is required into the best practice for drying groundnuts for domestic consumption as adoption rates of appropriate in-field drying techniques are currently low. The other challenge we have is uh, with the traders. Uh, yes, we have worked with the farmers and they understand what needs to be done. We still have a long way with the traders because at the point of sale, at the point at which they are buying the nuts in the villages, they do not discriminate whether the nuts are dry or they are wet, uh, they just need to buy. And that awareness we think at that level is a weakness in the chain and we are trying to address it with other stakeholders. They're not sorted at all, so you've got good nuts with completely moldy nuts, all mixed up in a high moisture environment, um, which is actually a disaster from a flatoxin point of view, because then there'll be a flatoxin cross-contamination, and eventually when those nuts are bought by somebody, they're either sold away and the ladies will just use what they think is the safe nuts because they recognize that moldy nuts taste bitter so they won't use those but cross-contamination will have happened already so nuts that look safe will be contaminated with toxin and it won't be visible to the naked eye. Uh, we keep coming back to quality and quality obviously starts in the field and the marketing at the primary stage and one problem we do have is that there are a lot of informal, unlicensed traders who come into the market who have no interest in quality whatsoever and they're prepared, prepared to pay the farmers and just take whatever quality they produce. I'm afraid this leads to a slight lack of control from the farmer's point of view and, and they tend to say, well, why do we have to bother with quality if these traders will just come in and buy from us as it is? So we do have quite a, a struggle, particularly as there's so many farmers, to get this message across. Those buying for export markets with strict quality standards have the challenge of competing with local traders whilst ensuring the safety of the ground nuts. Buying in shell or providing mechanical shellers at the point of purchase gives a competitive advantage as smallholders will be relieved of the arduous task of hand shelling. It's estimated that in Africa, women spend four billion hours a year shelling groundnuts. A shift to mechanical shelling could save a household in Malawi over 300 hours per year. When I can have a hand shelling machine, that means I have lessened the time of shelling uh, my nuts. I can be shelling so many bags a day, or a two or three, according to the machine. And that one can be a bit of help to me. A very, very big help. I can appreciate it. It's a very big help. Because the job, we do it because we don't have alternatives. ICRISAT is trying to promote some cheaper mechanical shellers. And, and the way it's linked up to aflatoxin is, is, is um, through the um, issue of discouraging women from sprinkling water to make shelling a little bit easier. Because when you sprinkle or in, you introduce moisture, the, the, the fungus usually thrives in situations where um, the humidity is a little bit higher and, and there's water. Buying in shell would improve the conditions in which ground nuts are stored, as the shell acts as a physical barrier to moisture and fungal contamination. Aflatoxin control and management can further be improved by storing nuts in natural fiber bags, such as hessian. These materials are more breathable and reduce the likelihood of moisture content increasing in storage. Uh, efforts that we've made as NASFA, working with ICRISAT, and our partner in Europe, Twin and Twin Trading, have now helped us to manage aflatoxin at farmer level, 
and also to build the capacity also at the storage level. Because most of these problems arise at storage level. When the moisture levels are not acceptable at storage level, you have multiplication of the uh, fungus. The complex nature of aflatoxin contamination requires a combination of approaches to improve the quality and safety of groundnuts, both for local and export markets. For export, buying groundnuts in shell and drying under controlled conditions will significantly enhance aflatoxin management and control and provide a better chance for groundnuts produced in Malawi to achieve the strict standards demanded by many countries. Introducing hand-operated mechanical shellers will help smallholders achieve greater productivity and improve the safety of their crop and the health of their communities. At TWIN, we believe this post-harvest work can be coupled with existing pre-harvest interventions, such as improving access to certified seed. Malawi's smallholder groundnut sector will then be armed with an all-encompassing approach to the challenge of aflatoxin. For smallholders, this will mean a more secure source of income, more financial stability, and a healthier future for themselves and their children. <laughs>